Hello and welcome to Meanwhile, back on the hobby farm. Today is Peppermint Sunday. Uh, just showed you just a little bit of the hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of peppermint plants that I have. And I just got that harvesting about a bushel of them. And before I show you, well, what I'm going to do is over here, we'll give you a little tour of the, uh, of the uh, pallet pub. And I use it as a pallet pub for occasional parties, not very much. But I also use it as my herb drying center. Right up here is today's peppermint. I have a whole bunch more in this quarter bushel basket. That's going to be a reclining chair chore. I will sit in the reclining chair tonight and break off the leaves. They were just too small to really hang up. And I'm going to dry them on a screen and then uh, harvest them just like I will for these. These will probably sit for a couple of weeks. I have a fan going on them right now. Come on, fan. I think I have to work on this uh, fan adjustment here. But anyway, got to get the air circulating. It'll be dark. I'm going to lock this all up and give it a couple of weeks and see how she's doing. Well, we'll continue for those of you who have, uh, that are new followers. This is the pallet pub that my son and I, was an old tool shed, that uh, we uh, spent a couple days and uh, we took some pallet wood, didn't stain it, cleaned it up a little bit, but that's it. Just uh, hung it all up there. A lot of the stuff is antiques and stuff and stuff we got. From. A lot of the stuff in the net that we acquired in the state of Maine, right up there is my first kite that I purchased about, uh, I want to say, 45 years ago, out at Hampton Beach. The net comes from uh, my wife and I, Joanne, we were first dating, and this goes back over seven years ago. We pulled that out of uh, Lake Michigan. We thought that there was uh, a body in there. It was so heavy. And i got to show you, this goes to a shipwreck. This right here has a little scroll on it, you can see. I uh, went on a banister of a... Uh, of, a, of some type of shipwreck. This comes from Maine. We pulled that out of the ocean. But anyway, we're not here to be uh, doing the uh, pallet pub tour. We are here for my herbs. And I'm going to show you something you're going to say, Ken, your floor looks disgusting. No, I purposely took the pieces that I didn't need uh, that had a little bit of brown spot on them. I threw them on the floor. And the reason why I do that is Peppermint is a uh, is a many wonders herb. It's good for very, uh, very, I should say a lot of uh, medicinal purposes. Headaches, menstrual cycles, flagellant. Oh boy, don't let my wife know. She'll be slipping this in my food. Um, skin irrigation, sinuses, allergies. It's also good for keeping rodents, insects, mites, Mites, mice, chipmunks, um, rubbing it, a dry, rubbing dry on uh, chickens that have uh, mites will help out. I've done that recently with a chicken that had some mites. It's also good to take some fresh twigs and throw them in your camp or your trailer. Throw them underneath the sink, throw them under a draw. Rodents do not like the smell. It will make them scatter. Uh, in the fall time, we take a lot of these and we put them underneath the sinks, we put them in the basement. Does it eliminate the mice? No, they'll just go to another corner of your home or your trailer. But if you put enough of it in there, uh, it does deter them from uh, wanting to hang out over there. So it's, it's a wonders, uh, uh, wonders of herbs. There's just so many different things. I buy oil in little jars from uh, Aldi's. It's 100% natural peppermint oil. I put it in a uh, spray bottle with water and I spray underneath the counters, uh, the cupboards at home. Uh, you can put underneath the bedding in your trailer, your camper, you name it. It's just, it's absolutely, uh, it's wonderful. I am going to be using all of this in herbs. I'll be selling some of it and the rest I'll be using. I wanted to show you something here a little bit. Over here, is one that I didn't obviously hang up. You can see how it's starting to turn brown and crusty. When it gets to this point, 
and most of your plants are like that. Don't even bother harvesting it because once it's drying, a lot of it's going to turn brown. It's going to be very unappealing. Um, I mean, it's still good to use as a deterrent for roads, but if you want it for tea, take this stuff and do what I did over here. Throw it on the floor. I only had a couple of them. It's, if I would have waited another week to... Uh, Turn this around over here. Ta da! Uh, if I would have waited another week, uh, they, a lot of them would have been like that, and I wouldn't have harvested uh, half of what I did. You can see there's another one here. Just, I only, three or four out of all of this bunch came out that way, so I still had another, another week to go. I like to, I'm going to turn this around, I like to have them about this length. I did let it grow a little bit longer on some of them, as you can see. But I don't like to have them too much longer than this. The longer it gets, it's like fruit. The longer you leave it on there, the bigger it gets. It looks good. It's appetizing. But you lose some of the, uh, the punch that it offers, the potency. So you're better off uh, just about this size right here. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm sitting here videotaping this. Peppermint has such a calm, relaxing... Um, it's what I call the, uh, well, things have changed, but back then, the legal marijuana. No, not smoking it, just smelling it gives you a nice, calm, relaxing state of mind, I guess is what you want to say. And over here, there's nothing to do with my peppermint, is my girl. She's the one that's got the, uh, the mites, and her body does not have any. The only area she has them for the last... Four or five days is going to be around her eyes. We're going to zoom in again. See if we can see any. Actually, I don't see any moving. I've been treating them every day. But um, she barrels her head in there and she'll, um, she comes out with me every day. When I'm working out in the garden, she, um, she comes out. They don't like wind very much. See, she's got her head tucked in underneath her uh, her right wing. Looks like she's the headless hen. <laughs> but she comes out every day um, because she does get locked up by herself uh, at nighttime. Uh, can't keep her around the other chickens until she's got the 100% clear of absolutely no mites even around. Even if she's only got a handful of them, uh, they will multiply like roaches. So anyway... We're going to go back inside the uh, pellet pub for a second. Okay, we made it back inside here. We are expecting some rain out here. We are excited. It's the first measurable rain we're going to have. And we got a quarter inch a couple of weeks ago, but it, it happened in such a short period of time. It wasn't worth even calling rain. They're talking about heavy storms. My son might be severe. If we could get an inch of rain out of that, that would be wonderful because we absolutely need it. Doesn't affect my uh, growing of my established herbs because uh, I didn't have to water these at all. Um, they, they, they've been in the ground for four years, four and a half years. They're pretty well, uh, pretty well e established. Tomorrow I am going to be harvesting some catnip. Catnip is also a member of the mint family. And then uh, probably in about two weeks, maybe some apple mint. Uh, the, the spare mint, not Mayan. I had some friends give me some spare mint plants almost a month ago now. I transplanted them. They're doing absolutely great. But they won't be ready to harvest for another month. But I may end up asking my friends if I can harvest some of theirs. And in return, I will hang it up like this, the spare mint that they have. And uh, I will keep some and, uh, and, and give them, you know, what they want. But that's it, folks. That is your lesson on Peppermint 101. Everything you wanted to and didn't want to know about Peppermint, I guess you just uh, saw it. And some of you are probably stuck on the one of the first uh, natural remedies. And when I said help symptoms of the menstrual cycle, some of you are saying, I want to buy some. I need some now. <laughs> um, we don't give any type of disclaimers. We're not doctors here. Um, I don't have menstrual cycles, so I don't know. I do know some people that have uh, drinking the tea, and they said they've helped uh, uh, some of the, what do you call, symptoms or discomfort. I don't know. But anyway, how we went from that to, from herbs to menstrual cycle, 
I don't know. But we're going to let you go, folks. Thank you. And the next video should be a different herb. I don't know if it'll be the catnip or yarrow or what we're going to end up doing. Hey, thank you for uh, stopping by. If you haven't subscribed, please, by all means, hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Throw us a comment or two. We'd love to, uh, we'd love to uh, hear from you. And we'll just do another 360 on the uh, view of the pallet pub slash herb drying hut. Take care, folks. Have a good day. Bye.